We thank God for the baptisms of uh, Gabriel and JP last, last Sunday. That was awesome, huh? Yeah. And um, we praise God. Uh, we're also going to get ready to uh, write some more letters to our Compassion children so that we can continue to impact their lives with the, with the Word of God uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ uh, to work mightily in their lives, their, their family's lives, their, their church's life, and their village's life. So, uh, we'll get ready to do that sometime in the near future. Well, good morning again, Emmanuel Church. Thank you for being here today. Happy Mother's Day, all you moms uh, out there in internet land. We thank God for you. We need you. We love you. And uh, we may not express it nearly enough, but we love our moms because our moms have the nurturing and love uh, from the Lord God through them to us in a very powerful, meaningful, uh, transforming way. So we thank God for our moms. Well, let's bow in prayer as we get ready uh, to open up this uh, message of is your election sure or is your salvation sure? So we welcome uh, uh, our, our internet friends. We pray that you'll watch us on, on Gab TV and Rumble as uh, we'll probably be phased out of Facebook and, and YouTube in the future, but we uh, we will still continue to proclaim the mighty name of God and to preach the truth about what's really going on in this world. So let's pray. Father, we come before you, Lord, thanking you, dear God, thanking you, dear God, for, for the freedom that we have in Christ, for the truth that we have in Christ, for the truth that you have given us through the shed blood of your Son, the Lord Jesus, to redeem us and to and to reclaim us from a lost situation, from, a, from our sinful nature. We thank you, dear God. We pray, dear God, that those out there in internet land and uh, here at the church, will, that we will continue to proclaim the mighty name of Jesus and always lift up his name to those around us, uh, that they too may know and walk in the power and strength of your mighty spirit. Thank you, dear God. We love you. We praise you. We worship you. And please now, Lord, uh, overtake us uh, here in the church and in internet land that we that 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 they may feel the power and mightiness of your spirit in their lives because you are everywhere and we praise you and we thank you because we ask these things we pray these things we believe these things in the most gracious powerful righteous holy name again we pray this in in jesus name thank you church god bless you well in review before we get started is in your election, is your election sure or is your salvation sure? In Deuteronomy, last week we talked about in Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 through 18, God is saying to all his precious people, all his precious creation, he says, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments his statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply and the lord your god will bless you in the land which you go to possess to possess our lives and where we live but if your heart turns what away, away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and you worship other what other gods and serve them i announce to you today that you shall surely what? Perish. Brothers and sisters, our world is perishing. Our, the, the, the broad road and the wide road is leading to destruction because people are not hearing what God's word says. They're not obeying what God says to do. And there are only two foundations we can build our lives on. You can build our lives on Jesus or anything or anyone else. That's the only two foundations there are, Jesus or everything else. So let us see what foundation we are on. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's take a test. Um, and we did this last week. We're going to do it again this week. Let's take a test of where we stand with Yahweh God by the Ten Commandments. In other words, we're all born into the wrong foundation. Now, how many of you have lied? Raise your hand. What does that make us? It makes us liars. How many of you have stolen something? Raise your hand. What does that make us? Thieves. Thieves. 
How many of you looked at someone with lust? What does that make us? Adulterers. Now, how many of you used the Lord's name in vain, which means to use it as a curse word? What does that make us? Blasphemers. So if you stand before God right now, you and I are, are liars, thieves, adulterers, and blasphemers at heart. Are we guilty or innocent? Well, we're, we're guilty. Heaven or hell? Well, so we only have two choices. We only have two uh, foundations. We can rely on ourselves or some false faith, or we can understand what Jesus did for us. And we all know this. This is just a reminder to keep our eyes focused on Jesus and to make sure that other people keep their eyes focused on Jesus. This is why Jesus went to the cross, to pay the penalty of our sins. We are all guilty. Even that precious little baby that we hold in our arms is guilty of sin. It, but it doesn't realize it yet, but soon it will grow up and will realize that there is sin. Now, if you're in a court of law and you have a large number of speeding tickets and someone pays your fine, the judge can legally let you go because justice has been served. That is exactly what Jesus did for us because he loves us. He paid our debt, which was with his death. Death is the only payment for our sins, and Jesus paid it. He paid it for us if we believe in him and what he did for, for our forgiveness. Then through repentance and faith in his atonement for us, we ask Jesus to save us and cleanse us. In Romans 6.23, it clearly states in the Bible that the eight wages of sin or the earnings of sin is what? Death. It's death. Death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Jesus had to go to the cross to pay our debt for us. Amen? Now, what a blessing that is. Then, uh, as an example of the choice that we are all faced with, is like being in an airplane that is about to crash. We can jump out of the plane and flap our wings, trying to save ourselves, or with some false religion, or we can put on Jesus, who is our only parachute. He's our only way to heaven. Jesus paid that fine for us. Jesus is the only way to parachute to heaven. In Romans 13, in 14 it says, but what? But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. So what will you do? Will you continue to build your life on anything or anyone else? Or will you pray right now and ask Jesus for a born again saving faith in him? Uh, please out there in, in, in internet land, please Put your faith in Christ if you have not done so and make absolutely sure that you are born again. Will you repent of your sins and ask Jesus for forgiveness? Will you ask Jesus to cleanse you with his shed blood as an atonement for your sins? Will you immerse your life into Jesus' life? Amen? I pray you do. Now, getting into God's word for today, God's pure and undefiled word word against an evil multimedia of this world. In 1 Peter 1, 2-11, and we've been going through this verse and, be, and dissecting it and getting deep into God's word, but we want to read it again. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus. As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. What a blessing it is that God has given us His divine power through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue by which you have been given us exceedingly great and precious what? Promise. Promises. Promises that through these you may be what? 
partakers of the divine nature having escaped the what? The corruption that is in this world through lust. Let's pause right there. Brothers and sisters, I don't think we realize how corrupted this world really is according to God's perspective. This world is so corrupt, it's even more corrupt than we think it is or than we can even imagine it is. He goes on to say, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, what are you supposed to do? Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. That faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ and that virtue is excellence of character. And to excellence of character, we add the knowledge of who we are in Christ. We build our foundation on Christ, not on our sinful, found, sinful nature. And then to the, to the knowledge of who we are in Christ, we, we add self-control or a godly control, a godly uh, uh, perspective. And to our godly perspective, we, ask, we, we add perseverance. We had to persevere. This is a tough time to be a Christian. In the United States, it's probably one of the toughest times it is to be a Christian in the United States because the persecution uh, is coming from the unbelievers that are in control of our government. And to perseverance, we're to add uh, godliness. We're to continue in godliness. We're to continue in, in letting God uh, rule and reign our lives, not our flesh. We're not here to please men. We're here to please God. And then to godliness, we add brotherly kindness. We're to be very concerned about our Christian brothers and sisters and to do good unto them. And then to brotherly kindness, we're to add love. God's agape love. God's unconditional, unfailing, never quit love for one another. Even if we disagree with one another, we're still never to stop loving, with one, loving one another. We're to even love our enemies. For if these things are yours, and what? If they what? In you. Abound in you. Thank you, church. You will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness. You know, brothers and sisters, our world is blind to all these things. But you're not. We're not. And has forgotten and some people have forgotten that he has what? Cleansed them from his, his old sins. Therefore, brethren, and here's, here's the, the core of our message today. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent. We're supposed to be diligent about all those other things, but it says be even more diligent, more diligent to make your call and election sure that you are sure, sure, truly, truly saved. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Isn't that awesome? God doesn't want you to stumble. He doesn't want you to fail. If you put these things in your life and you're diligent to make sure that your call and election is sure, you will never stumble as we continue to seek God. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Is that a hallelujah church? Amen. It's an amen. Yahweh God is has and is showing his believers how to have his divine power to live lives filled with his godliness. Amen? Through biblical knowledge of who he is and, and who we are in him and how to escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. God, God says this world is completely and thoroughly corrupted. The world, on the other hand, is going the opposite direction of Yahweh God's principles. Let us as believers make sure our call and our election, our salvation is sure. Let us help others make sure that they have salvation and election and sh they are sure as well. There are many people who think they are saved and on their way to heaven. Isn't that, isn't that disturbing? There's many people who think they are saved and on their way to heaven. But Jesus says in Luke 6, 46, but why do you what? Why do you what? 
call. Good job, brother. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not and not do the things I what? I say. Many people call themselves Christians, but they do not obey Jesus. In Matthew 7, 21 through 23, Jesus again says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the what? The kingdom of heaven. Can you imagine what it would be like if we're standing before God thinking we're going to heaven and, and Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. How horrible that will be thinking that we're going to heaven and we find out we were not. That's why it's imperative, it's so important to make sure that our election, that, our, that we have born again saving faith in Jesus and that it's confirmed by the Holy Spirit of God. Because Jesus goes on and says, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven, many will say, well, what is the will's Father? I mean, what is the, the Father's will? To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to put on Christ. He says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your what? In your name and cast out demons in your name and done many what? Wonders in your name. And then, Jesus speaking, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, me, you who practice lawlessness or sinfulness. We must make sure our election, that our salvation is confirmed by the Holy Spirit so that we do not stumble at judgment day. So, in continuing with this, how, how, have you ever wondered why there's so much div division in, your world, in the world today? Raise your hand if you wonder why there's so much division in the world today. Amen? Have you ever wondered why there's so much evil in our world today? Raise your hand if you wondered that. How about, have you wondered why there's so, uh, so little common sense in people's thinking? You ever wondered about that? Have you wondered why so many of our children are, are so against the formal moral conscience our nation used to have? You ever wondered about that? Raise your hand. Yes. Have you wondered why love for one another is fading into hatred of one another? You ever wondered about that? Well, here it is. Our present government is making so many evil decisions and promoting so much evil sin our Yahweh God is about to bring judgment on America and the entire world. Our present government thinks they are making decisions that are going to make our country and world better, but instead they are attacking Yahweh God and His principles even more than ever before. Our government and mainstream media are doing things that are polarizing people rather than uniting us. They are breeding contempt for one another and breeding hatred. This is not surprising though because in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4 it says, but know this, that in the last days perilous times or fierce danger will come for men will be lovers of themselves. They will have self-love. They will be narcissistic. We even hear this in, in uh, Christian circles that we're to love ourselves and that we're to build our self-esteem. But that's not what God's Word says. God's Word says, deny yourself. Take up your cross. Die to your, to your, 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 uh, your desires, your motives, your goals, and follow Christ. His goals. His foundation. Um, it goes on to say that people will be lovers of what? Money. Money. You've heard the saying many times, if you want to know where the evil is, follow the money. Our world is so uh, money prone, it is unbelievable. Uh, I, it, it is unbelievable that our government, big pharmaceutical companies, big technological companies, are all in it for money. They become boasters, proud, blasphemers, Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-what? Control. They're haughty. They're lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. God help us not to be sucked into any of those things as believers. 
Now, our government and mainstream media are forcing Yahweh God to bring His wrath of judgment upon America, and most people do not even realize what is coming. And here it is in Revelation. Revelation 16, 16 through 21. Now, understand, this is the last bowl. This is the 21st judgment of God upon the earth. There's been 20 other uh, seven, seven seals, seven trumpets, and six bowls already poured over the earth to judge the earth. This is the last one. And here's what the word says. And they gathered them together to a place called, in Hebrew, Armageddon. Then the seventh angel poured out his what? His bowl into the air. And a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is what? It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and what? Lightnings. And there was a great earthquake. Such a mighty and great earthquake as has not occurred since men were on the earth. It's the worst earthquake that mankind has ever seen. Now the great city was divided into three parts. The cities of, of the nations fell. And great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his what? His wrath, his anger. God is upset with the sin of this world. And look, look at how bad this earthquake was. Look at then every island fled away, and the mountains were not what? They were not found. They disappeared. The mountains disappeared. Can you imagine if all of a sudden all the Rocky Mountains that we see over here disappeared? It would take a huge earthquake to flatten those babies. And then great hail fell from heaven upon men, and each hailstone about the weight of a talent. And the weight of a talent is about 75 pounds. That's not a small hailstone. Men, and what did men do? They blasphemed God. They, they cursed. Who? Uh. They cursed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. And they still would not repent because the men's, men's hearts were evil. Men and women's hearts were evil. Yahweh God is about to unleash His wrath upon the world and that the world that the world has never seen before. So many people are being misled by a satanic conspiracy and most people do not even realize it, including most of our government, big technological companies, big pharmaceutical companies. So why is all this happening? Why is our society as a whole getting worse instead of getting worse? better well let's let's examine this closer now as a young man before i was saved yahweh god placed a question in my mind and i did not realize it was god doing it the question is what is the meaning of life what are we here for what is my or our purpose on earth what is all of this for now before i was saved i thought well we 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 grow up we're born, we grow up, we live with our parents, we get an education, we get married, we have children, we have grandchildren, and then we die. Is that it? What's the purpose? Well, that's, that's where most people in this world are right now. That's all they have to live for is to, to make themselves feel important. So as a human beings, we all need food, water, and shelter. Now after these needs are met, we need a purpose or a meaning to our existence for our lives. Now listen to this. Every soul has a huge God-sized hole in it. This hole is what is our God-given purpose is. And it is to be filled with what the meaning of our lives is is according to God. It is an unstoppable force within us to try to fill this hole by finding our meaning or our purpose. We are constantly trying to fulfill this purpose always. Unbelievers have this God-sized hole as well. Well, as believers, 
we have found that this whole or purpose is Yahweh God himself. Believers have found, or more accurately, have been led by the Holy Spirit of, of God, the Holy Ghost, to understand that the whole, the meaning, the purpose is the filling of Yahweh God in that whole. He is the purpose and he and is definitely the meaning needed in our lives. This whole meaning and purpose are the needed filling of our lives with Yahweh God. It's His will. It's His plan for our lives, not ours. It's His will, His plan for our lives. And He's the only one that can bring that purpose and that meaning to our lives. He's the only one. Yahweh God is the only one that can fill that empty hole in all of us. Now, for those people who have not found Yahweh God as the fulfilling of that whole or purpose or meaning of their life, they are looking to fill that endless hole with everything and every way possible. They are looking in all the wrong places to fill this emptiness which is gnawing at their soul. So they look for causes that will bring them a sense of purpose and meaning to fill that empty, empty hole. However, they are looking for this feeling, fulfilling without their Creator God's wisdom and knowledge. So where do these unbelievers in Yahweh God get their inspiration from? Guess where? They get it from Satan, the prince of the power of the air. Look at what Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 says. And he's talking to believers who became believers, and he says, And you he made what? Alive, we were dead in trespasses and sin in which we once walked according to the course of this world, which was mankind's fallen nature, according to the prince of the power of the air, the superhuman rebellious Satan. The spirit or the principalities and powers and forces of darkness in heavenly places. Remember, our battle isn't with flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness in heavenly places. It's against Satan. Among whom also we all once conducted what? Our lives. Ourselves, our lives, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the what? Desires. The desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by children, or were by nature children of what? Of wrath. We were children of, of the wrath of God, just like the others. But God saved us. God called us out by name. He called us and He changed us and transformed us because we listened to Him and we surrendered our lives to Him. Amen? So, unbelievers are getting their direction or purpose or meaning to fill, fulfill their empty hole from Satan. You either get it from God or you get it from Satan. You either get it from God or, from, or you get it from the world. Unbelievers in our government, in big technological companies, in big pharmaceutical companies, in uh, multimedia companies, major universities, are all following Satan's plan to have purpose and meaning in their lives. Does that make sense? That's why these unbelievers are pro-abortion, pro-globalization, pro-LGBTQ+. They're pro-same-sex marriages. They're pro-open borders. They're pro-COVID pandemic severe shutdowns. They're pro-vaccines, which, by the way, let me share with you, those vaccines are not really vaccines. Vaccines are, are supposed to contain the virus of what you're vaccinating for. It's supposed to be a dead virus. There is no uh, COVID-19 uh, virus in these vaccines. It's genetic therapy. It's altering people's God-given genetic immunities. It's changing it. Do we want to leave our God-given immunities uh, immunities that God has given us? Do we want to let mankind change it? 
from what God already made it, God already made it perfect. As perfect as it's going to get. We, want to, we don't want to let mankind alter our God-given immunity system because man will destroy it. And that's what's happening. Um, this is why uh, unbelievers are pro... They, they celebrate pro-racism false narratives. Brothers and sisters, all, all this so-called racism that's going on, these, all these people were born 80 years too late. The racism was 80 years ago. It's not now. I mean, I, sure, there is some racism uh, in, in people, but we are not systemically racist, a racist nation. We're the most... We're, we're a nation that has so many different kinds of people and we celebrate people's lives. We don't, we, we're not, as a nation, we're not prejudiced against other people. Like I said, there's some that still are holding prejudices, but they're wrong. Anyway, uh, anti-police. You know, God raised uh, policemen and military to protect us from evil things. We can't be anti-police. Yes, there's some bad cops, but most of them are good. Most of them are good, God-fearing uh, people like us. They care about people. Then there's the, uh, uh, this is why unbelievers are anti-Christian, anti-biblical theology. Because all of these issues are a complete opposite of Yahweh God's plan and purposes for His creation. Satan is again trying to globalize the world. Did you know that? So that he can become the physical king of the earth. He wants to sit on the throne at the, on the mercy seat in the newly built temple uh, in Jerusalem. Now, how many of you realize that Satan already tried to globalize this world? He did in, um, at the Tower of Babel. In Genesis 11, 1 through 9, Satan was was tempting man to build a, a, a tower to heaven to reach God to reach Godness uh, through their own efforts. And God saw what they were doing and he came down and he said, that is not how you reach me. You have to surrender to me. And so God, there was one language that all people spoke and he, he, confused, he diversified all the languages. That's why we have all different kinds of languages. And then he separated the, the, the people from uh, one another through the oceans and he made the boundaries. Look what it says in Acts 17, 24 and the 26. God who made the what? The worlds and everything in it since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with man's hands, things made by human hands, as though he what? He needed anything. Since he gives to all life, God gives to all life, breath and all things. And he has made from one blood. So there should be no prejudice. We're all made from one blood. There should be no racism because no racism is allowed by God. We're to love everyone. He's made uh, of one blood every what? Every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. And here it is. And has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of of their dwellings. God put the boundaries so that they would seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for Him or feel after Him and find Him, though He is not what? Good job. He's not far from each uh, one of us. So Yahweh God made many different languages so people would not conspire with Satan to globalize the world. God also set boundaries so that, again, it would be harder for mankind to form a one-world government with Satan. That's what's going on in our world today. They're trying to 
the globalists are trying to form a one world, uh, one world government and they have to destroy the United States of America to do it. So in getting back to unbelievers fulfilling their lives with Satan's false issues of importance, they are redefining what was good and right with America. Remember, our Constitution is over 50% direct and indir indirect quotes from the Bible. Unbelievers are, are stealing not only elections, but they are stealing America's godly heritage. Remember, Satan hates Yahweh God, and Satan hates what is Christian, and Satan hates God's people, and he will do all he can to destroy Christianity in the world and especially in America. This is why, brothers and sisters, there's so much division in our world today. Yahweh God is allowing Satan to divide the world so believers will be separated from the unbelievers. The sheep from the goats. God's people separated from Satan's people. So, <clears throat> again, let's make sure of our invitation, our calling from God, and confirm our acceptance of being born from above by faith in Jesus alone. And then let us make sure our, our election or that our salvation is sure. And again, we need to help others realize this. So, as a little uh, examination, have you been changed from the inside outward? Do you have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness? Do you feel convicted when you do something against God's word? Do you feel empty when you do not study God's word? Do you feel empty when you do not study God's word? Do you have compassion for others that is unexplainable other than it comes from God? Do you have a sense of calm even though you used to be very anxious and worried? These are all indications of a changed life powered by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit through a born-again faith in Jesus and Jesus alone. Thank God for His transforming power in our lives. Amen, church? Amen. So in conclusion, will you make sure your election or your salvation is, is secure or true by having a genuine, born-again, life-transforming faith in Yahweh God, Jesus, and that you have been forgiven of all and every sin through the blood of Jesus. Will you help others make sure their salvation or election is sure also by having a confirmation of a transformed life by the power of of the Holy Spirit, if you surrender to Jesus and let Him do these things in you, you will be saved and you will not stumble at Judgment Day. Amen, church? Amen. Isn't that a blessing? God doesn't want us to be left behind and He wants us to help others not be left behind as well. Well, let's bow in prayer. Father, we thank You, dear God. We praise You, dear God. And we pray, dear God, that You would give us a born-again saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for those of us who have not received it. And then, Lord, give us a confirmation as to that we truly are saved and truly born again by the power of your Holy Spirit. May we be intimate with you to, to seek you and to understand and to listen to your voice. Because if we're your sheep, we will hear your voice. For you are the good shepherd. Father, we thank you, dear God, for sending the Lord Jesus Christ to be our shepherd. And we pray to God that we are truly born again and that we are truly his sheep and we will help others to become uh, his sheep as well. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, and we ask these things and pray these things and believe, believe these things in the power and strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church. Thank you for being here today. God bless you, moms. Thank you, dear God, for our moms. We love our moms. Our moms are so important and so good to us. They, even when, when everybody else might, might despise us or hate us, our moms always seem to love. Amen.